In this video, we're going to start going through the decision-making process for how you decide whether a given reaction is going to go through SN1, SN2, E1, or E2. But before we do that, I think it's good just to have a little overview. Make sure a checklist of things that you understand before you try doing any of these problems, because if you don't understand these things, it's going to be extremely difficult to make headway in understanding exactly what's going on in the problem. So let's just like make a list of all the things that would be important for you to know before trying to attempt these types of problems. Number one, do you understand leaving group ability? So what makes something a good leaving group? What makes something a bad leaving group? Uh, how do you identify what a leaving group on a molecule will be? Uh, what is a leaving group? These are the type of questions that in previous videos and if you've done your reading in the chapter should be able to answer. In a bottom line, the leaving group, a good leaving group is a weak base the weaker the base, the better the leaving group in general. Um, that is sort of like the bottom line, but being able to apply that, of course, is extremely important. Second question is really, what makes something a good nucleophile or a good base? So what are some of the factors to make something a, a good nucleophile or a strong nucleophile versus a weak nucleophile? Um, again, this is another subject which we've covered in previous videos and is undoubtedly somewhere in your course notes. But before you can be able to understand whether a reaction is going to go through, let's say, SN1 or SN2 or E1 or E2, this is going to be a key thing to be able to identify. OK, am I looking at a good nucleophile here or poor nucleophile? So understanding the factors which make for something to be a good nucleophile or a good base is crucial. The third factor which would be important to look at is the factor of carbocation stability. So what is a carbocation? Uh, is a car how stable is a carbocation? What are some of the factors which make a carbocation more stable than other carbocations? So these are factors which impede and come into the SN1 reaction in particular and the E1 reaction, understanding the factors that make for carbocation stability. So certainly if this topic sounds unfamiliar to you, I would be well advised to go back. Maybe check out some of the videos that I've made on what under on understanding what makes carbocations stable and some carbocations unstable. The fourth thing to look at is really just the mechanism for each of these reactions. So you really want to go into each of these reactions and understand what happens, what is the story of how the bonds form and break. That is really what a mechanism is. It's, it's a story for how these bonds form and break and understanding what the, what the, what the rate limiting step is in each case and also, what are the factors which make this reaction fast or slow? These are important things to understand. The last factor to really keep in mind when you're thinking about each of these reactions is, is not even beyond the point of being able to predict which you're, whether you're going to have SN1, SN2, E1, E2, but really just how to, how to apply these reactions. So even if you know that a reaction is SN2, can you correctly draw the product as an SN2 product. So that is goes without saying extremely important if you want to get the correct answer to be able to know how to show that you've drawn the product correctly. So assuming that you're comfortable with each of these five topics, we can start getting into the uh, main four questions you really want to ask yourself when you're thinking about the SN1, the SN2, and E1, E2. And like I said, if these topics were unfamiliar to you or you feel like you need to go through more review, there's previous videos in the series that we can go through each of those topics in detail so you'll feel more confident as you approach this question, um, how to understand, how to approach it. So here we've got four key questions we're going to ask about each of the reactions we're going to look at. Okay. And the first question really, and you can sort of go in decreasing order of importance, so from most important to least important. The first real question we're going to ask is going to be important for SN1, SN2, E1, E2, is that type of substrate. And by substrate, we're going to say it really we're interested in the carbon attached to the leaving group. So in other words, is it primary? Is it secondary? Is it tertiary? That question. So that's going to have a huge impact on whether a reaction is going to go through SN1, SN2, E1, or E2. The second question we're going to ask is going to be the type of nucleophile or base 
So is it strong or is it weak? And we'll be able to identify whether something is a strong nucleophile, it might go down one pathway more than another. Or if it's a weak nucleophile, it might go down a different pathway or a strong base, weak base, vice versa. Remember, nucleophiles are involved in substitution reactions. Bases are involved in elimination reactions. So, and you know, molecules can act as nucleophiles or bases, depending on whether they're attacking carbon, in which case we call it a nucleophile, or if it's attacking hydrogen, we call it a base. So type of nucleophile or type of base. Third question we're gonna ask is, what type of solvent are we looking at? There's really just two key things to look at here, is polar protic and polar aprotic. I mean, polar protic solvents tend to have OH present somewhere on them, polar aprotic. They have dipoles, but no, no OH directly. Uh, so the dipoles, they have some polarity to them, but they don't, they don't have hydrogen bonding. And the fourth question, which doesn't come up that much, but it, it, it can be important, is the temperature. We'll talk about that, how especially heat can, can start to favor if you've gone through the previous video on heat with elimination reactions, you know that heat favors elimination reactions um, more than it favors substitution reactions. So that can that can certainly play a role in the SN1, SN2, E1, E2 decision as well. So in the next couple of videos, we're going to go through each of these factors in turn, and we're going to see how they impact uh, our decision-making process for figuring out whether a given reaction is SN1, SN2, E1, or E2.